Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the greatest. You see, it is very easy for one to elevate, to praise his hero, his saint, his imam, his prophet. Very easy to idolize our great men. Very easy. And we all have a tendency to do that, whether Hindu, Muslim, Christian, Jew. That whom do you esteem to be the greatest person? So each will give his hero according to his knowledge and experience. But if the enemy praises your hero, then that is real praise indeed. You agree? Coming from the enemy. And in that regard, a book has just been published in America. The title of that book is The Hundred. See this book? Quite an expensive book. The Hundred. Alternatively described as the top hundred or the greatest hundred in history. The author is a certain Michael H. Hart, described as an astronomer and a mathematician. This American, he goes out of his way to search in history for the hundred most influential men from Adam alayhi salam, from Adam, up to current times. And he gives us a list of those hundred most influential men according to his reasoning. And the amazing thing about his list is this. That number one on his list, if you can guess, is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number one, Muhammad. An American in America writing a book which retails in America for $12.50, 572 pages. Who will buy his book? The 200 million nominal Christians of America or the 6 million Jews? Not Pakistanis, Bangladeshis, or Arabs. Oh, they'll buy one here, one there. But the bulk of his customers will be the Americans. The market is the American market, Christians and Jews. And he's telling them that Muhammad, the member of their opposition, is the first man, the greatest man, most influential man in history. And the shocking thing about his list is this that his own Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is number three. The honor for Christianity, or whatever it is, is to be divided between Paul and Christ. And he said that the real founder of Christianity is not Jesus Christ, is Saint Paul. He wrote more books. The New Testament consists of 27 books, 27 different books, out of which more than half, 14 are written by this one man, Paul, Saint Paul the self-appointed apostle of Jesus, self-appointed. He didn't go and choose him. He chose 12. But the self-appointed apostle, as he claims, Paul, he wrote 14 out of 27 books, more than half. And everything that the Christian is preaching today is not the preachings of Jesus, are not the teachings of Jesus, are the teachings of Paul. So I'm asking, please account for it. Why should an American in America publish a book he wants to do business? And he's provoking his customers. You see, in business, we say that the customer is always right. You must appease your customers. If you want to do business, you must please your customers. You don't argue and debate with your customers. Others, they won't come back. But this man is telling his customers that they are all wrong. And he's right. Muhammad number one, Jesus Christ number three. Allah says, Lakat kana lakum fi rasulillahi uswatul hasana. So most certainly in the apostle of Allah, you have the best example. This is in 1840. 1840. 14 years later, in 1854, a Frenchman writes the history of the Turks by the name of Lamartine, a Frenchman. And in, incidentally, the Turks being Muslim, so he starts speaking about our Nabi. 
He says something. And he gives us three other objective standards. Now this is something great about the Westerner. He's looking for angles which, he didn't, which we didn't think before. Jews Masserman, he says now those three qualities. This man is talking about other three qualities. And his qualities he's giving is, he says, number one, he has greatness of purpose, what the man is out to do. Mama arsalna ka illa rahmatan lil alameen, Allah says. We have not sent you, but as a mercy unto the whole of mankind, the whole universal man. Alameen of the world. Alam means the world, and alameen means the world, not only physical world, spiritual world, every type of creation. Wama arsalna ka illa rahmatan lil alameen. That's his purpose in life, as a mercy unto the whole of mankind. Not for Jews, not for Hindus, or Arya Samaj, he is for the whole of mankind. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. This is how he starts. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord and cherisher of the world. Smallness of means. You know how he starts? Before he is born, his father dies. By the time he is six, his mother dies. His grandfather starts looking after the, the little infant child, and before long, grandfather dies. Then by the time he's 12, his uncle Abu Talib's goats is looking after. This is the beginning, smallness of means. No political party to back him up. No royalty to back him up. It's one man against all men. One man against the whole world. Nobody, his own people were not prepared to receive his message. From the word go, trials and tribulations, you know his history. Outstanding results are the three criteria of human genius. So who could dare to compare any great man in modern history with Muhammad? He dares, bring your candidate. Any man, bring him, compare with this man Muhammad. Who could dare to compare, he is daring you, bring yours, to compare with this man. This is the most famous men, talking about others, created arms arms, armies, laws and empires only. They found that if anything at all, no more than material powers which often crumbled away before their eyes, like Hitler's power. Crumbled away before his own eyes. Hit Mussolini's power crumbled away before his eyes. Mikado's Japan crumbled away before his very eyes. Crumbled away before their eyes. This man, Muhammad, moved not only armies, legislations, empires, peoples and dynasties, but millions of men. And more than that, he moved the gods, the gods of the people, he moved them out of the way. The gods, the religions, the ideas, the beliefs, and the souls. And he ends his beautiful tribute by saying, philosopher, orator, apostle, legislator, warrior, conqueror of ideas, the restorer of rational beliefs, of a cult without images, the founder of 20 terrestrial empires and of one spiritual empire. That is Muhammad. That is Muhammad. With regards to all standards, all standards, whereby human greatness may be measured, we may well ask, is there any man greater than he? Is there? The answer is in the question. The answer is in the question he's asking. In other words, he's saying, no man greater than Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The greatest man that ever lived was Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 